What is going on, everyone? We are here with another episode of the Spotlight Series hosted by yours truly, ACK. Um, Y'all know the drill at this point is we're slowly reaching that 100 goal mark and we're adding all different kinds of artists on here. And today I welcome Nolan Gray to the show. Nolan, how are you today, man? Good, man. Thanks for having me. How are you? No, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, not too bad of a day here, a little chilly here in Boston, but other than that, just living life, doing these interviews and just having a blast listening to new artists and new music and stuff like that. So it's cool. So just appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here and talk about your story through music. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. No, of course. Um, so kind of really just hopping right into the first question, because it's always the basic of basics, and it really kind of just sets up the whole interview, um, is where did singing and playing kind of really start for you? Because I know for some people, it starts at such an early age, they start humming nursery rhymes the day they were born and stuff like that. But then, like to compare it to someone like myself, who only started songwriting and producing and stuff back in 2018. So that was only a few years ago. Um, but so where did kind of everything come about for you? Um, I think it all started when I, I grew up going to church a lot. My mom played the piano and then I think, I don't really know the exact age, but I was like nine or 10 and my, my cousin, we always went back and forth, which we'd always kind of copy each other. She started playing guitar. So I was like, well, I want to do that. So I started playing guitar for our church. So my dad bought me one. And then, uh, I don't know if you know who John Langston is. He told me to write every day mm -hmm. if I wanted to do it. So. That was probably when I was 17 years old. So John's got me into writing. So now we kind of threw it all together. So here we are. <laughs> no, and that's awesome, man. I mean, I remember when I first heard um, your single GTO, like it was just, it's such a vibe. Like it's just so cool. And I mean, just your vocals and everything are just super powerful and they're unique too. And probably we'll get more to that when we get to kind of like the third and fourth question. But the second question is always kind of my favorite. And sometimes we could sit here for two hours talking about it. And sometimes we'll sit here for like three minutes and talk about it. But kind of looking at inspirations, I mean, I could sit here and talk about all kinds of inspirations. I mean, people knew that I grew up on country music. So like, I mean, that 90s, early 2000s country is really where I reminisce, like with Garth Brooks, um, Travis Tritt. Tim McGraw, like just, and then Chris Daughtry now is one of my all time favorite artists. He's a rock and roll artist. So, I mean, it just, it kind of varies and there are so many artists that you could probably name, but if you could just kind of narrow it down to a few, who are some inspirations that you kind of really just look up to when it comes to making music? Dude, I have, I could seriously go a whole week talking about it, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm up for this question. So I think if I narrowed it down, it'd probably be like a, uh, good friend of mine connor smith mm -hmm. uh john dylan marlowe like a lot of guys you don't know um my two good friends of mine from after midtown uh michael rotundo and adam ernst okay. and then of course you got like on hardy i'm really big on hardy right now the new rock stuff so just stuff like that i grew up on like kind of pop so mm -hmm. younger paramore maroon five but i got i'm a little bit of everywhere so yeah, no, and it's always cool just to have like that little like of everything because I always we actually just talked about this on another episode um a couple days ago is it's sometimes like I just like I get like that you're in this own genre and like you're just like you're like this is who I am this is where I am but at the end of the day it's really cool to open those other doors and go through all these other avenues like with inspirations and stuff like that because it can just lead to so many more opportunities like i was saying like the kind of quote that i said was there's four lanes on the highway for a reason because you can go at whatever speed you want to go you can go wherever you want to go so it's always cool when people kind of just say like you like kind of had like that pop stuff but then you named a couple of other artists and stuff like that so it's always cool to kind of really hear the mixture of inspirations that you have yeah I'm a little bit a little bit everywhere yeah no and hey I respect that that's me too I mean as much as I am a country boy at heart I mean I love pop music rap R&B rock and roll all that fun stuff um and kind of talking about some of these artists too as it gets into the third question and it's always one of my favorites is the creative process um obviously you probably know as a songwriter and any songwriter that listens to this knows that there is no rhyme or reason to the whole process when it comes to writing music it can sometimes be all over the place it can start with a melody it can start with the lyrics and it just kind of goes from there and I always have to quote Garrett Walker who was on the show is he said the songwriting process is like a puzzle whether you have 
like a hundred piece puzzle, a 500 piece puzzle, you have them all scattered all over the place and you're trying to slowly figure out where these pieces fit. And by the end, you have this full thing, you have the full song, the full masterpiece that you can share with people. So kind of my question for you is what is your creative process like when it comes to creating music? Um, I think uh, a lot of it's coming from, uh, I had a lot of other artists going back and forth. They told me, it's all about just telling a story. And I, I think the the first song that I really just kind of was like, I like that. I want to write songs like that. was like Good Direction by Billy Carrington. I feel like you can just picture that whole song. Then uh, Break Up in a Small Town or whatever by Sam Hunt. And you can just, you can just picture the song. So when I write, it's just like, I want people to see it. Like that GTO song, I felt like people could just see that song. I, I don't know if it's me or everybody, but I feel like I could just vision that song. No, absolutely. And I mean, it's just what you just said, like telling the story and having people visualize that that's what draws me into having artists on the show is when they can do stuff like that. Because yeah, no, your song 100% GTO. And I mean, just any song in general that like, you can just sit there and close your eyes and picture that whole thing from start to finish. It's almost just like reading a book or listening to an audio book or something like that. So it's always really cool when artists just have that passion for just telling the story. Mm -hmm. um so kind of getting to the fourth question I always love this question it's my favorite throughout the show and it's always the hardest question that I do ask and artists usually hate it but that's why I say thank god I'm the one asking the question and not answering it but um there are hundreds and thousands of artists out there trying to make a name for themselves trying to get exposure on all kinds of platforms Instagram TikTok Spotify Apple Music all that fun stuff um, and obviously you probably know just kind of promoting your music and stuff. It's hard to just get your name out there and gain more exposure and get those streams and get fans to want to listen to your music compared to all these other artists. Um, so at the end of the day is what makes you, you compared to all these other artists? What can we take away from your music that we can't find in anyone else's music? That is a hard question. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of just want to be myself. Like, I mean, I, t I feel like I take away from like all my inspirations and just try to mix them. But then I want to be me. But that TikTok stuff, it's kind of hard. It's hard to do it for music. You, uh, yeah. I feel like my only way to get views and all that is like to do the TikToker stuff rather than music stuff. And I'm like, man, I can't be doing that. I got to promote my music. So it's hard. No, it's very hard. It no, it is, honestly. I mean, I admit, like, all the time that I am not the biggest TikTok person in the whole world. Like, I try to, I try to, like, put some of my interviews and stuff on there, like, clips and stuff like that. But, like, Instagram is just really kind of where I started with everything. And that's just what I'm familiar with. And I know how to do and know how to roll with it. So that's what I've been rolling with. But no, it is just, it, it's one of the hardest things to do is to just try and put yourself out there and compete with all these other artists. Um, getting to the fifth and final question kind of here before we listen to some live music from you, which is always my favorite part of the interview, um, is kind of looking towards your future. Um, some of your short-term and long-term goals as an artist and just what else we can expect down the road. Obviously you have that one song out right now, GTO, and obviously I'm assuming you're probably writing and working on getting some new music out there, but just kind of what else can we expect from you looking down the road? Um, uh, I think early of the first quarter of 2023 and we'll put out another single and um, I'm just hoping to play a lot more shows and hopefully get to the kind of what Morgan and all them just doing Bailey yeah. playing the state playing the sold out stuff but a big 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 goal of mine is to play the Opry I feel like that's everybody everybody can relate to that so that's probably top of my list yeah, no. And I mean, that's awesome. I actually just had the chance to go down to Nashville back in October for the first time. And we um, we went to the Opry and we saw a few artists there. It was just it's just such an unbelievable experience just to even even if you're not up on that stage standing in that circle, just to be there and sit in that audience and just take in that whole scene is just it's truly something that you could never dream of. Yeah, I bet. Um, so that kind of concludes all the questions I have for you today. Um, and it's getting to the good part of the show, which is obviously hearing something from you. So kind of usually what I do is I'll put myself on mute. If you want to just kind of let us know a little bit about what song you're going to do. And other than that, man, the floor is going to be yours. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. <clears throat> um, 
this uh this song is the only really one that i have on spotify right now but i wrote it when i was 17 this is like the third song that i ever wrote and i've written every day since then since i was 17 so kind of went back and rewrote it and i just wanted to kind of tell a story with it and it's called uh it's called gto and it's really like a reference to my favorite uh brooks and dunn song so her daddy didn't like me much when i shackled up gto so i kind of took that gto and was like everywhere i go i see the gto so let's go ahead and play it for you <clears throat> Could have swore you sold that car. The one we used to ride in at the door. Always got a little too far. A little crazy when you put it in park. And yeah, I know those are your place. Same color, same red paint. Never seen them tail out the place. Fade away in that shade of gray. You're burning these roads up and breaking my heart down. I can't get away from you no matter the route. I blow these stops off to your car in these red lights. I'm going with these same roads. Cause everywhere I see the GTO. It's just a verse in the chorus. So you got to go to Spotify and Apple to find the rest absolutely no i love that because usually that's what i do with my audience is usually if people if artists don't can't perform on the show that day is i'll play the first verse and first chorus and then they always bash me for it because i want you to get the stream so that is per perfect note to end that on so but honestly man that is just it's such a great song you're a phenomenal artist and obviously can't wait to see what else happens down the road for you. And I'm just super excited. If you're up here having a show in Boston, I will definitely be there in the stands supporting sure. you and getting ready for that. But again, Nolan, thank you so much for taking time to be here today. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me. No, of course. Um, kind of before I do my little outro here, though, um, just real quick is where can people go find you on social medias? everywhere but like only fans and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. perfect and everything just under nolan gray i'm assuming no like weird underscores perfect. anything like that no it's just nolan gray music everywhere perfect man awesome again nolan thank you so much for taking time to sit here talk about your story play a little music for us had a blast talking to you today and just can't wait to see what else is coming for you really appreciate it man thank thank you no, of course. Um, so that kind of concludes another episode of the Spotlight series hosted by yours truly, ACK. Um, Y'all know the drill at this point is Sundays, 1 p.m. Eastern. We got new music, new artists, new stories. Never know who's going to pop through. Never know what you're going to hear. So y'all stay tuned for next week. And thanks for tuning in today.